and welcome to another tutorial another video and this time we'll be talking about creating data driven application and if the audio qu quality is poor I, I sincerely apologize I am working on trying to get a better sound system but for now this will do so this is, this is the, the objective of this particular video is to create an app a data driven app and we'll be using a framework called streamlit to sort of stream lit <laughs> our application uh building process uh, it makes it much more quicker it's almost like uh, putting up a house with everything already pre uh built like all the components and all you, all you have to do is just p uh, piece it together so it's it's much easier with the streamlit framework and we'll be doing that by fetching some data first and then we'll cache the data and we need to inspect the raw data as well we want to have a look at what it is that we're actually working with um, then after that we need to have a visualization of the data which makes interpret uh, interpretation of the data much easier so we have to draw charts in order to do that and then uh, to supplement the application we're going to use some interactive widgets it makes it uh, uh just a lot more convenient for us to toy around with the data so hopefully you find something of value to your project uh, so let's just dive straight into it okay so what i've done is i've opened up a text editor whatever text editor or ide that you prefer to use just go ahead and use that and then the very first thing that i did was i named my script map explorer and have the extension dot python and then after doing that the first thing that we need to do is we need to import streamlet then import numpy to work with arrays then import pandas to work with data sets i'm going to give my application a title In the application, because we're working with call it Uber pickups and yeah, so the, this is just this is just, this is just a generic application that's going to help us uh, understand some of the data of uber pickups and drop-offs in new york city in a particular time period so once that's done what i like to do is I just run the application then gives me uh, a file path for my particular script and this comes in handy when you fire up your cmd and you want to run uh your script if you haven't already sort of configured your class path all you have to do is copy and paste the file path enter and streamlit automatically opens up our application there and that's how it looks like so i'll just open that next to the script so that we can have A direct view of what we're doing uh, as we work along the application so now now that you have all that ready to go you have your local host running of your application on and everything else is imported the next step is we need to create a function so we need to uh, fetch some data that was our first step that we need to do now, in order to do this, we need to um, write an application to load our data. So what I'll do is, what, we'll, what we will do is load the data using a function that will uh, allow us to download the data. And then we're gonna put that data into a pandas uh, data frame and then convert the date column from text to date time and have the function only accept a single parameter. We're gonna call that 
uh, n rows, which will specify the number of rows that uh, we can load into the data frame. So let's get into it. And we're gonna grab URL, and it's just some raw Uber, uh, some raw data, some demo data from Uber. Just gonna find the URL, the link for it. There we go. So that's where we'll be grabbing our data from. Then after that, let's create our function. And that's our single parameter. use the lambda function here as well. Always have to mind the syntax. It's a wrong spelling, a wrong uh, comma here or there. It just messes up the whole, the whole function. and return the data. So that is how our function is looking like. So we have our load data function that downloads some data, puts it into a data panda frame. And then the function will accept one single parameter, which will specify the number of rows that we want to put, uh, want to load into the data frame. Okay, so once that's done, we need to to now test the function and review the out the output. So we're going to write the following lines. We're going to create a text element and let the reader know that the data is loading. So let's create a text element. Let's paste this out. Loading data. So this will, le will let 
the reader know that the data is loading and then we're going to load 10,000 rows of data into the data frame let's see 10,000 rows into the data frame using this particular code and finally we'll notify the reader that the data was successfully loaded that is if everything went right loading data loading data Hooray, done. So let's run that. Loading data. Hooray, data is loading data done. Now notice how long that took, okay? One, two, three, four, five six seven almost seven seconds or five seconds thereabout and that's just too long so it takes a while it turns out for us to load ten thousand lines into a, da uh, a data frame and then converting the data uh, the date column into date uh date time isn't a quick job either so you don't want to reload the data each time the app is updated but this is where we cache the data. This is where the in, in need for us to cache the data falls in. Now we do that by simply adding this particular line before the load data declaration. So this is the line that we use to cache, to effort, effortlessly cache the data. So when you mark the function with the streamlit cache notation, st.cache, it tells streamlit that, that whenever the function is called, that it should check three things. The actual bytecode that makes up the body of the function, uh, this, the code variables and files that the function depends on, the input parameters that you call the function with. So these are the three elements that streamlit checks and then if the first uh if this is the first time that streamlit has been uh, has seen these items with these exact values and in the exact combination it runs the function and stores the results in a local cache so that so the next time the function is called if the three values haven't changed then streamlit just knows it can skip the executing of the function altogether and instead it just reads the output from the local cache and passes it into the caller so this is let's just save our script and rerun that so what's it's well what are we getting there we're getting an error a syntax error so we misspelled cache let's just correct that little bug when we rerun that notice how quick that was before it took about seven seconds for us to load the 10,000 lines and have everything work but now every time we rerun this it takes less than a second so this is why caching the data is very important it makes things much more efficient and everything just runs quicker and smoother. Now, it's always a good idea for us to actually have a look at the raw data that we're working with before we start working with it. Now, let's just add that. Let's have a look at this raw data. So I want to have a look at this raw data.
and I'm always re instead of saying always rerun, I just I like to rerun. I don't know why, I'm just weird like that. So it's loading our raw data. And there we go. So that's the raw data that we're working with. So it's showing us the times. You can have a look and inspect the data. It's showing us the time from September the 4th. Uh, so the 10,000 lines, I just scroll all the way down. So 10,000 lines up to September the 8th of all the Uber pickups and drop-offs in New York City on in uh, between September the 1st and September the 8th in 2014. And you could see the latitude and longitude and the base and everything else for the data. And you can play around, have a look at the different time periods. Um, you can already look at, look at the data and sort of draw certain conclusions already that <laughs> at midnight it's not very busy so you can see that's not not a lot of pickups going on at midnight um, but obviously when you look at the time during the peak hours so let's say at uh, eight uh, seven around that particular time uh, you can see the pickups start to pick up, pun unintended. <laughs> so that's a look at, at the raw data. So we are passing the data frame and having it render an interactive table. And st.write tries to do the right thing based on the data type of the input. And obviously we get a table and it just makes it easier for us to inspect the raw data when we have it in, in, in a table format. Now that that's, we've had a look at the data set and observed what's available, now let's take it further, right? And actually have a visualization and draw a histogram to see what, what's, what, what's Uber's busiest hours in New York City. So we're going to start by adding a subheader. Let's just add a subheader. And say, call it number of pickups by the hour. And then we'll use NumPy to generate a histogram that will break down pickup times by the hour. So let us generate the histogram. By the hour. And then we'll have the range uh, zero to twenty four because that's how many hours there are in a day, right? Zero to twenty four hours, and let's add a curly bracket. And get rid of that curly bracket there because it doesn't end there. The histogram, and let's add an assignment operator. So that should generate a histogram for us that will break down the pickup times by the hour 
between 0 and 24. And then that should give us a closer inspection as to what is the busiest times. Because having a look at that, it you could you could guess obviously during the peak hours, but I want to have a look really in New York City. What are the busiest hours for Uber pickups? And let's save the script and rerun that. That's funny. We actually have to chart. <laughs> we have to actually chart. Have a bar chart to actually give us a visualization <laughs> of the data. All right, let's rerun that. See, there we go. So, having a look at this histogram, we see that. It peaks at eight. It gets busy at eight. Not peaks. It gets it gets busy at eight, and around two it picks up again, until it reaches max peak at seventeen hundred hours. So that's around five p.m. where you get seven hundred and fifty pickups and drop offs, seven four seven to be exact. So just by analyzing a histogram, it gives us a more clearer view of when it is that the number of pickups are busiest by the hour is around 1700 or around, around 5 p.m. So that gives us uh, a clearer scope really and that's the purpose of histograms uh, or like uh, charts is to give us a clearer interpretation of the data rather than just analyzing the raw data itself. So that is how you can essentially draw the histogram in streamlit and obviously don't make the error that i made by forgetting to actually chart uh the actual histogram and have <laughs> otherwise you won't see it in your application okay now that's well and good but we when we look at our raw data here okay We want to determine what the busiest times are for pickups, right? But what if we wanted to figure out where where exactly in the city or in New York City are the concentrated pickups? Now, you could just use the bar chart to show the data. It wouldn't be easy to interpret unless you're familiar with latitudinal and longitudinal coordinates in the city so if you're if you're familiar with latitudes and longitudes it would be very difficult for you to know exactly where in new york city are the busiest spots for uber pickups now we can use we can show a map of the concentration instead of just interpreting from latitude and longitude in the table of where the uber pickups are so let's name a subheader. Let's call it school uh, map. Let's call it map of all pickups. And we're going to use the st map function to load our data of New York City and let's just close that off with a parentheses and when we rerun this it plots for us in New York City where exactly this concentration is of all these pickups so you could see on a map there of where all the pickups are instead of just relying on latitude and longitude and you could see there of a, that there is a dense cluster of pickups in in new york city in particular uh, there is a little bit outside of new york uh, outside of the city but it's particularly dense in new york itself 
Now, we already know that the busiest times, as we stated earlier, is at 1700 hours. That's 5 p.m. Instead of just having the map show everything, all the Uber, of the Uber pickups, how about actually I have the map just show exactly where the pickups happen during the busiest hour? In order to achieve that objective, I'm going to have to hard code and replace these particular sets of lines, line 30 and 29. And let's have the hour replaced. Let's have the, 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 the entire pickup replaced with the busiest hour, which is 1700, 1700 hour or 5 p.m. In order to achieve that, we are going to have to write these lines. How to filter 17. Then let's filter out the data. Let's say filter data. Let's assign that. Let's have it by the hour. many assignment operators there and then let's just give it a new subheading sub uh, let's say let's have the map of all pickups at Have the hour to filter, which is seventeen hundred hours. Let's add the two zeros, seventeen hundred hours, and then let's map it out. Let's map. Let's map it out. Let's rerun that. Oops, we're getting an error. And that is our line 32 saying, hey, what is map? I don't know what map is. Of course, there is no map. It's a filter data. There you go. So once we rerun that, now we, we begin to get a clearer view of exactly I had to space at the 1700 there. So we get a clear view of exactly the, the, the cluster of the busiest time period, which is at 17, 1700 hours, of all the pickups at 1700 hours in New York City. And you could sort of see the difference. Let me just get that map up again of all the pickups, right? The map of all pickups just, just load up the data let's 
Let's rerun that. And yeah, as you can see in our application, the difference between the map of all pickups and the map of the pickup only at 1700 hours. You see there, it's harder for us to interpret exactly what's going on. Like where, I can't, well, yeah, all the, everything happened. All this is just this blob of des a dense cluster of all the pickups that happened in New York City. Whereas with this, we can sort of get a, get a more distinct understanding of where all the pickups happened at the peak hour, which is at 1500 hours. So we know when, or the reader gets to know exactly when it is that most pickups happen in New York City, and that is at 1700 hours, and exactly where it happens, you could sort of see it usually happens, get a dense cluster around this particular uh, place here, and that's around the Empire State Building. Empire State Building, you can sort of see a little bit there, and Midtown Manhattan, so it, uh, Manhattan area, that's where all the massive uh, Uber pickups happen at 1700 hours in New York City. So that is one way we could sort of map or get a representation of the data further. But see, now I'm not quite happy with all this. Well and true, but our application looks just messy. There's too, too many things going on. We, we can simplify this and not only simplify it, but also we can actually filter out the results with a, with a slider. And this allows the reader to actually interact with the data and they can filter out, filter out the data as in, in real time as they please, just using a slider. And we're gonna try, let's just do that instead of this, of instead of hard coding everything ourselves. So let's just clean up our application now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of show of of the entire map, then change the hour to filter. And use a slider instead. what else can we do let's add in the subheader we'll move this just a little further down and then I'll rename it map of all pickups See how we go. There we go. So that so that gives the reader or the user of our application a little bit more interactivity with the application itself, and you can use a slider instead to see number of pickups at different time periods so at 5 a.m and as we as we saw in the histogram at 2 a.m around 2 a.m that was our low, low point the least amount of pickups and you could see he could see it himself so at 2 a.m barely any pickups right 
barely any pickups. But at 1700, you get more pickup pickups then. So that is one way for us to actually give the, uh, the the reader of the or the user of our application a little bit more uh, power to interact with the application, and it makes uh, interactivity using widgets just a little bit more suitable in this in this in, in this instance. Then we could just make things like a little bit more neater. We could hide out the raw data by putting in the a checkbox and say and then if the user wants to have a look at the raw data they can do that but if not we can hide the raw data because we don't want it just makes the whole application messy so let's just add a checkbox and let's call it say hey do you want to see the raw, raw data question mark yeah question mark and then dot 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 <laughs> Save that. Get a good syntax error here. It's a checkbox. And there we go. Yeah, there you go. So that should do it. So if we look at our application, Uber pickups and drop-offs in New York City. And it hides the raw data. It gives us the, it gives the user the option to actually click. Hey, do you want to have a look at the raw data? If they click on that checkbox, yes. They get to see the raw data. If it's but the default setting is it's unclicked because not everyone wants to look at the raw data. And to make our application just a little bit more neater, I reckon if we change, let's say that, to NYC, everyone knows what NYC means. It's slightly neater. And then once the user just clicks on the checkbox, as I, as I was stating before, you can have a look at all the raw data if they, if they want to, if they choose to. And then they'll see all the, the busiest pickup hours with the histogram and they have the capacity as well to choose which hour they want to further have a look at. And that gives the user just more, a, a little bit more power to interact with the application. So that is a quick and simple way for us to actually build data-driven application using this beautiful frame, framework called Streamlit. And that's enough rambling for me. I'm literally done. <laughs> so I'm gonna link in the in this in the description. I'll link in my GitHub repository. Uh, I'll link in my uh, my website as well, rovora.com. I'll be I'll be blogging. I'll be writing some articles because I enjoy writing. 
uh, technical stuff and non-technical stuff. And then you could sort of reference. I haven't started, I haven't written anything yet, but I've had it for a while, but I'm going to link that in the description. And if you want to have a look at the source code as well, I'll, I'll have everything linked in the description. And I also have a link because I did deploy this application. I'll leave a link in the description as well. So that if you want to have a look at the, this ap application that we made, you can do so yourself. So that's it from me. And hopefully this will add a little bit more value to your project or whatever thing that you're working on. Uh, and this is just a quick way for us to build data-driven applications. And um, that's it. So always looking for easy and quick ways to do things. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, that's it. <laughs> I'm beginning to realize when it comes to closing our videos, I always struggle. I, I don't know why. So I'll just leave it at this. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>